The Sky AI tool is without a doubt one of the coolest tools in Luminar Neo. It allows you to swap your sky with one simple click. So in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the tool and how to get the most out of it. OK, and off we go into Luminar Neo, where we're starting in the catalog module. Of course, as usual, we are starting by looking at our sample files. Now we have an image of this lady right here and five skies. Now, what are we going to do? Well, if you want to follow me along and do the edit on your own computer, jump into the description of this video, download the sample files, import just this one photo and let's start. We're going to start by moving the image into the editing module where we're going to look for the Sky AI tool. Well, to find it, we need to go into the main editing toolbar into the landscape section we go and here we're going to click on the Sky AI tool. Now, before we jump into the, all the controllers and sections here, let's ask our friend Lumibot to tell us more about this tool. Thank you, Jakub. And hello, everyone. This clever tool lets you replace the sky in your photo with just a few clicks. Whether your original sky is dull, overexposed, or simply not matching your creative vision, Sky AI can transform the whole mood of your image. It automatically detects the sky creates a realistic mask, and even adjusts lighting, shadows, and reflections to match your new sky seamlessly. If you want to truly master sky replacement, including how to deal with tricky edges, lighting mismatches, and creative enhancements, be sure to check out the Sky Replacement Masterclass. You'll learn everything you need to take your edits from pretty good to absolutely stunning. Now over to Jakub who will walk you through all the Sky AI controls and how to get the most out of them. Very good. Thank you very much. Now we can continue. Let's go through all the different controllers. Starting from the top. Well, if the tool is grayed out, if it's not active, the problem is that you don't have enough sky on your image. This tool generally needs about at least 20% of your image to be sky or to have a sky for it to work. So if it's grayed out, there is not enough sky on your photo. But for us, it's good, it's all active. So starting from the top, we have the section call for this photo. Now, this is a little bit similar to the presets. It's basically a recommendation on what you can use or what you can try to use on your image. So let's select the first one. It's super simple. You just click on it and it applies to your photo. So that's a one example. Now, it's not great, right? Because there is this kind of glow and so on. Then we have a second one which is a little bit better, actually, I quite like that. And then we have a third option. Now it has this little card here. And basically, this is a sky you can buy from Skyland. You click on the button, you go to Skyland website, buy the sky and use it. <laughs> but for us, we're not going to use any of the suggested sky. So we're going to reset the image with this little arrow and continue. How are we going to continue? Well, we go into the sky selection because as it's named, this is where you select your sky, where you add your sky and where you organize them. Well, starting from the top, here is a great drop down box. If you click on it, you will see number of options. Of course, all skies include all skies you have in your application. Then there are some folders like a subfolders like blue skies and bright blue skies and so on. But very basically in all skies, this is where all the skies you have in your application are and you can just go through them and apply them to your photo very quickly. So it's kind of handy. You can do things like this and just keep going through. Well, let's go back to our great drop down box. So we have a number of things here, including show custom skies here. And this will bring us nicely to the idea of adding your skies, because of course you can do that. You can use your own skies. So first, how do you add one single sky, like a quick way to add it? Well, into the all skies we go and we're going to scroll all the way to the bottom. Here, you're going to find a little icon with a plus sign. So click on that and then navigate towards the folder of our sample files. Here, you will see the folder called Daylight Skies. So just open it and inside you will see five different blue skies. Well, you can just select the first one and click on open. Now, the downfall here is that you cannot apply or add more than one sky. You can only add one. So you select the first one, click on open, and just like that, it will appear. And then you have to go back again, click on the plus sign, select the second sky and keep adding. 
So how would you add multiple skies? Well, let me show you. Again, we're going to click on our sky selection. And in the gray drop down box, we're going to go into show custom skies. This will open the custom folder where we already have the two skies we have added earlier. So how to add multiple skies? Where what we need to do, we need to navigate towards the sample files of this episode. Inside there is five of our skies. So we have already add one and two. So we can select the third, hold command or control, select the fourth and fifth. After this, command or control C to copy back to the custom folder where we're gonna use the command or control V and the skies appear here. Now the question is, do they appear in Luminar Neo? So let's go and check. So into Luminar Neo, again, click on our dropdown box, click on our dropdown box here, and we're gonna go into new folder called custom. Once we click on that, you will notice that all five skies are here. So now you can very easily just go through them, select them and see if they work on your photo. Now, finally, I wanna show you one more thing. By adding skies like this, they will all go into the custom folder. So how about if you want to create your own folder, like my backup here? Well, for this, we need to again go back to our folder here. Now we have the skies here, right? Blue sky one, two, blue sky five. We are in the custom folder. So how about if we create a new folder? So new folder, and we can call this daylight skies. After this, Simply take the five skies and move them into this folder. So now we have the daylight skies folder. Going back into Luminar Neo, going back to our sky selector into our drop down box. Here at the bottom, we have the daylight skies. And once we select it, we can still select our skies from here. Just a quick reminder by adding them into the folder, it still means that they will be in your all skies section, just like all the skies in this. Tool. So let's continue. Let's go into our folder, Daylight Skies, and let's just select the sky we like. Now, this one looks good. Let's try the other one. I'm not so crazy about it. This one, well, no. This one, we need something that is bright at the bottom so it matches the trees. Um, this one, no. So let's go with this sky right here. By the way, if you're looking for more skies for your sky library, then check out the link in the description of this video and learn more about our super popular Ultimate Sky Bundle. Now, moving on, we're going to select the sky and then we're going to continue into more controllers. So starting from the top, sky orientation. This is where you can adjust the orientation of your sky, starting from the top with the horizon position. Now, I usually like to bring it up so I can see the edge of the sky and then bring it down to align it with the horizon. So just like this here. After that, we have the vertical position that is similar to the horizon. But basically, we are just moving the actual sky up and down, whatever works for you. I think somewhere around here. Then, of course, we can adjust the horizontal position, which moves the sky more towards right and more towards left. Now, as you keep pushing, it will keep spreading the sky to make sure that it keeps covering the entire image. Now, just like any sliders, double click, just reset them. Finally, in this section, we can also flip the sky left and right. And by doing that, you can also adjust the direction of the light. So if you have a sky with the sun here and the sun is actually coming from this direction, you can click on flip and flip it around. Now, what works for us? Actually, I think the flip on Flip on looks good. Then we can shift it tiny bit towards the right. That gives us a little bit of the white area here. And that's about it. Okay, sky orientation. So let's close that and move on into mask refinement. Now here we have a three sliders, global, close gaps and fix details. Now the global slider by default, it's on 30 and it controls the amount of the sky mixed with your image. So when we increase it, there will be more and more sky coming. And when we bring it down, you will see some of the edges will start to appear because it will remove the mixture. So generally the 30 works really well, but you can of course increase it and see if it helps with blending the edges. After that, close gaps. Well, we're talking about the gaps between the trees and between the different areas. Again, by default, it's on 10, but by bringing it down, you will get some space in between. And by increasing it, it will cover more and more. 
Now, generally, you have to play between the global and closed gaps to find the right balance. But if you choose the right sky right at the beginning, you will save lots of time with the mask refinement. So closed gaps, talking about the gaps between different elements and global talking about the mixing of the sky with your original image. Finally, the fixed details by default on 30. Basically, it really look at the small details like the branches and leaves and try to create mask around them. Now, 30 is good. I usually go somewhere between 50 and 60 and take it from there. After this, it's time to move into scene relighting. Now, there are two sliders I use all the time. Relight strength. This is where you match the original image light with the new sky. By default, it's on that 20, but I generally like to adjust it to at least 50. Relight saturation, same idea, but you matching the saturation of the new sky and the original image. So again, generally somewhere between 40 or 50 works very well here. After this, we have the Relight Human. Now, let's see what it does when we increase the slider. You will see that the human or our subject here is getting darker. Now that works really well, especially if you have a darker sky. In general, around 20 is enough, but it's completely up to you on how much you want to add. So let's see, by default on zero, and we can go around 20. After this, it's time to look at the reflection. Now with the reflection, by default it's on 50, and actually there is a little bit of the sky there. But to see it better, let's take the slider and increase it all the way to 100. Can you see it now? This part and this part. Basically, the reflection, look for the body of water and try to reflect the sky in it. At zero, it's like this, you can't see it at all. Around the 50, you see a little bit, and when you go to 100, you see lots of the sky. But it also doesn't look very natural, right? I mean, we have the brown and suddenly we have this light blue. So I think that around the 50 or 60 is generally a good setting. Additionally, if the water is blurry, just like this here, and you have really defined clouds, then adding a little bit of water blur can just help with the overall matching. So you can see we can add a little bit of blur. Now we can go crazy and make it like a long exposure, but I think around 10 is more than enough. So this is a reflection, very easy. Now let's bring it back to 60 and let's continue. Now we're gonna continue in the sky adjustments. This is where we editing the actual sky. Now defocus, you can see that the lady is in full focus, just like everything at her point, and then slowly it gets softer, softer until it's really soft at the back. Now suddenly above it is a sky which has full details. It's not realistic, right? So what you do, you add a little bit of defocus. So somewhere around, let's have a look, maybe 30. And that look so much more natural and like it belongs there. Now, similar to that, if your original photo has a lot of noise, then you can use the grain slider to add some grain and technically a noise into the sky to match it. Again, we're talking about matching the new sky and the original scene. So you can defocus the sky and you can add rain. Now, after this, we have the atmospheric haze that add a little bit of that haze to the sky. And for example, on this photo, it can work really well, right? It is a little bit blurry, a little bit haze, and it really look like it belongs there. So you need to try it, increase it and see if it helps or not to your photo. I think for us on this one, we go to 70 and actually it works very well. Well, finally, two self-explanatory sliders, warmth. So by increasing, you will add warmth to the sky, which I think in this case is a good idea. So you can go really heavy on that, or you can go the other way around and make it really cool. So remove the warmth. Now for us, as I mentioned, I think around, let's see, around 30 looks really good. Finally, just like the warmth, you adjust the brightness so you can make the new sky brighter and go crazy or darker the other way around. Now let's reset it. I think a little bit of extra brightness around 20 will work well on this image. And that's about it. So that was the sky adjustments. Now let's have a look at the before and after. So before and after, and just very quickly, let's talk about masking. So sky AI, just like most of the tools in Luminar Neo have a masking built in. So let's say that some areas are not blended properly or it's not really working. Well, you can of course use the masking here. For example, take the brush, click on erase. Let's go with the strength on around 30, make it a little bit bigger. And you can, let's say, brush away the effect from this area here. If you think it's too strong, just like that, 
also over the area over the trees if you want to. You could also completely remove the reflection again just by brushing there and doing something like this. Now in general you're hoping that the Sky AI will work without masking but if it needs to be helped then definitely the masking option is here just like with any other tool. And that's how the Sky AI works. Now, by the way, if you're interested in mastering Sky Replacement, then definitely check out our latest Sky Replacement Masterclass. You can find out more about it on our website at cleverphotographer.com or follow the link in the description of this video, get the best possible price and create incredible edits, bring your photos back to life and master this important technique of Sky Replacement. On top of that, don't forget that Clever Photographer YouTube channel has a video for every single tool in Luminar Neo. So don't stop here, continue learning and keep moving forward on your photo editing journey.